one of the deputy directors of the Office of Nuclear Regulatory Research, who is the actual regulator. This is not Office of Research at this point. These are people who are going to be responsible for signing their names at the bottom of licenses, which says that you have permission to operate a reactor, possess nuclear material. What we're trying to show for this is we're getting people who are seriously interested in actually operating reactors at this point and looking at their safety. And so this is part of that central message of MSRs are transitioning from being primarily laboratory tools and such and beginning to get to the point where we're going to be generating power and putting it on the grid and we're going to be interested in ensuring that they have adequate safety so that we can because if we fail on this, we will never get an opportunity again and we will harm the people in the environment. So without further ado, we'll turn this over to uh, Mr. Robert Taylor of the NRC. One of the things that inspires us is the opportunity to get up every day and be part of this technology advancement and to help the country move forward on its goals for climate change and the administration's importance that it's placing on the advanced reactors. And this is probably one of the most bipartisan efforts we've seen historically for advanced reactors and new reactors. So it's it's just absolutely great to be here. The NRC doesn't pick winners and losers in technology. So my presentation will be a little bit higher in um, discussion than specifically focused on MSRs, but I'll bring in the MSRs in certain places. But you can see how we're gonna approach technology inclusive activities for licensing the advanced reactors. And I have a dedicated staff here who find this, uh, who do this every day, and they're really interested in moving forward on the reviews. And you'll hear a lot of the themes already presented from the three panelists who came before me to uh, relative to how we're gonna undertake uh, these activities. So uh, you'll see my presentation cover some of their activities as well. We're strategically transforming and modernizing to prepare for the safe deployment of advanced reactors. And on the right hand side here, you'll see that we have a specific vision in the Office of Nuclear Reactor Regulation, and that's to make the safe use of nuclear technology possible. So when these reactors demonstrate their safety profiles, our job is to make an efficient and effective licensing decision for them to allow their deployment in the United States. The market will decide where the technologies go, but the NRC's job is to not get in the way of the market and the ability to deploy these if they're uh, proven safe. So this slide highlights six of our key activities that we're working on that underpin our entire advanced reactor program. And I won't go through each one uh, specifically, but I'll touch on a couple very quickly. So we're transforming our workforce. Um, it's really important. We have a workforce that has been focused and dedicated to the licensing of large light water reactors. Uh, for years and years and years. So now we would have to prepare those folks to do the reviews of these advanced reactor designs, which will have different safety profiles and different potential risks than the large light water reactors. But we wanna recognize those potential safety advancements that they have and give credit where that credit is due. Um, we're modernizing our tools. So just like was discussed before me, the preparation of our codes and analytical tools to allow us to do independent confirmatory analyses and reviews so that we can make more efficient licensing decisions and identify what we believe is the most safety significant aspects of the design. And the last, we're building flexible review strategies, which are technology inclusive that should work for all the different designs, including MSR. So we wanna be able to adapt and move in different directions uh, based on the technologies. We call it the evolving landscape because this slide is almost out of date as soon as we prepare it. Each time you'll see MSRs listed in here among other technologies that are being uh, pursued and, and sought. So we expect 13 or more current and potential applications by 2027. So the two we have in house right now are Oklo's micro reactor and we just received the Kairos Hermes MSR uh, test reactor and have started the acceptance review of that for the construction permit. And then we expect to issue six or more operating licenses uh, by 2027. And down here at the bottom, you'll see that we're engaged in a number of pre-application activities uh, with vendors who plan to come in. Uh, Kairos in particular has been very active in pre-application and we've truly appreciated that because it prepares us to understand the technology even better when it comes in and to understand where the safety significant attributes are so that we can allocate our resources most closely to where those safety significant pieces are. This is an eye chart uh, to follow with the broad landscape of the advanced reactor designs. As you can see here in the yellow is the MSR 
technologies, and I mentioned the Kairos. You heard before about the Advanced Reactor Demonstration Program uh, recipients and of awards, and those are highlighted in these various um, colors that are on here, whether they got the Demo Reactor Award, the Risk Reduction, or the ARC-20 awards. And you'll see that we have the Kairos and the Oklo under review, and then stars indicate where we have pre-application activities. The Kairos reactor is going to be, uh, for now, a, a test reactor. So we'll license it in accordance with our the Atomic Energy Act uh, Section 104 requirements, which lead to minimum uh, regulation for that type of technology, recognizing that it has it's a smaller design with better uh, safety features and such. So we'll use the same equivalent we use for like NIST to do the licensing review of the RTR. It's not going to be for a power production demonstration. We are working aggressively to foster relationships uh, with various um, entities out there, including the Department of Energy. That's one of our most important uh, relationships, and I'll talk about that here on the next slide. We truly want the input of our vendors, the public, the NGOs, uh, those on the Hill, and, and our international counterparts as we prepare for the licensing of these new uh, technologies. To my point about cooperating with the Department of Energy, this is just a snapshot of the things that we are doing. Uh, some of these are related to operating reactors as well, but they'll inform our advanced reactor activities. So you heard about source term and Melkor work that's ongoing. We are closely coordinating with the ENRIC, the National Reactor Innovation Center. Um, we have an MOU with DOE on the versatile test reactor activities as well, as well as an MOU with DOE on the advanced reactor demonstration uh, program. And then you can see uh, updates on modeling and simulation tools, as was discussed earlier. That's one of the most important things I think we have to get right, is having the right tools to be able to do uh, these reviews, because that will help us understand where the safety margins are and where defense in depth exists within the designs. More broadly, as we leverage research activities, you'll see that our partnerships uh, exist both within the United States domestically, especially with the national labs, as well as internationally. We recognize that it's really important to get input from a variety of sources, and you'll see under the Czech Republic there, molten salt uh, electrochemistry is an area where we're working with them uh, to get insights in, on the research that they're doing, plus as well as engaging with uh, Oak Ridge on molten salt um, compatibility. So a lot is going on there. So maybe just I'll stop here and pause for a second and talk about a couple things that are MSR specific that we think are really important activities that we have ongoing. We're currently funding and participating in the phenomenon identification ranking table efforts, which will help us identify the needs related to modeling and simulation and fundamental safety functions for the MSRs. We're also developing guidance under a contract with Oak Ridge related to fuel qualification for liquid fueled metal salt, liquid fueled salt MSR designs, and expect to develop a regulatory guide on fuel qualifications in the near future. We're engaging with the MSR community and participating in several MSR related working groups, such as NEI's Molten Salt Reactor Technical Working Group and the ANS 20.2 Draft Standard working group. So you can see we have a lot going on in research activities preparing us for the different technologies, but specifically for MSRs, so that we'll be prepared to do these reviews. And lastly, I'm going to just put in a little plug for our website. We've overhauled this entire web page, and it's great work by, by the staff here at the NRC to make it much easier to follow the efforts that we have ongoing and the work that's, that's um, being undertaken. And you can see when you go to this website, uh, charts of the different activities that we have ongoing and the schedules we're on to complete those activities. You can see the different technologies that are engaging with us and get some background information on each of those. You can see where we stand on resolving key policy issues and um, developing guidance uh, related to those. So I encourage anybody who's interested to follow and track what the NRC is doing to use this website as the first tool for following our, our activities. So with that, I want to thank you for the opportunity to present today, and we are excited here at the NRC to be part of this journey with the labs and with the vendors and developers as we embark on uh, deploying these advanced technologies, including MSRs. So thank you.